فلقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله بيبلي كمنسينغ فرم ورس نمبر 105 of سورة النساء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنا أنزلنا إليك الكتاب بالحق لتحكم بين الناس بما أراك الله ولا تكن للقائنين قصيما واستغفر الله إن الله كان غفورا رحيما Verily we have revealed to you the book with truth Verily we have revealed towards you the book with truth that you may judge between the people with what has shown you Allah and not you be lil khainina for the deceivers or for the treacherous khasima a pleader and seek forgiveness from Allah when Allah is most forgiving most merciful beshak humne nazil ki aap ki taraf kitab ko haq ke saath taake aap faisla kare logon ke darmiyan اس کے ذریعے جو دکھایا آپ کو اللہ اور نہ تم ہو نہ خیانت کرنے والوں کے لیے وکالت کرنے والے اور بخشش طلب کرو اللہ سے بے شک اللہ ہے خوب بخشنے والا خوب رحم فرمانے والا ولا تجا دلو ولا تجا دل ان لذینہ یکتان انفسا ہوں ان اللہ لا یوہب من کا نہ قوان اسیما يستخفون من الناس ولا يستخفون من الله وهو معهم إذ يبيتون ما لا يرزى من الخول وكان الله بما يعملون محيطا And not you argue on behalf of those who have betrayed themselves not you argue on behalf of those who have betrayed themselves when well, allah does not love whoever is a treacherous person a sinful person yastaghfuna min an-nas they hide from the people what not, while not they can hide from allah wa huwa ma'hum and he is with them is yubayyituna when they plot at night what not he approves of the word وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِمَا يَعْمَلُنَا مُحِيطًا And is Allah with what they do all encompassing. اور نہ تم وقالت کرنا ان لوگوں کے لئے ان لوگوں کے لئے جو خیانت کرتے ہیں اپنے جانوں پر بے شک اللہ نہیں پسند کرتا جو کوئی ہو خیانت کرنے والا کنے کر وہ چھپاتے ہیں لوگوں سے حالانکہ وہ نہیں چھپا سکتے اللہ سے جبکہ وہ ان کے ساتھ ہوتا ہے جب وہ خفیہ تدبیریں کرتے ہیں رات کے وقت جو نہیں پسند کرتا اللہ ان کی بات کو اور ہے اللہ اس پر جو وہ عمل کرتے ہیں محیطہ گھیرے ہوئے یا احیاتہ کیے ہوئے ہے ان تم ہے اولا اجادل تم انہم فی الحیات الدنیا فمائی یجادل اللہ انہم یوم القیامتی امائی یکون علیہم وکیلہ Yes, you are these, you argue on behalf of them in the life of this world. But who can argue against Allah for them on the day of Qiyamah or who can be for them a defender or a protector? Haan, tum yahi log ho, tum wakalat karte ho, unke liye dunya ki zindagi mein لیکن کون وکالت کر سکے گا اللہ کے خلاف ان کے لئے قیامت کا دن یا کون ہوگا ان کے لئے کوئی وکیل The verses that we read so far was on the subject of cheating being dishonest being treacherous betraying gross human rights violation جو ہم نے آیتیں پڑھے اللہ سبحانہ وتعالیٰ اس عنوان پر بیس کر رہا ہے ڈسکس کر رہا ہے خیانت کے میٹر میں خیانت خیانت کرنا 
دھوکا دینا فریب کرنا کسی معصوم پر تہمت لگانا دس از دا سبجیکٹ اللہ سبحان ڈسکسنگ وچ از اے ویری ویری ریلیونٹ ٹو آر لائف پرٹیکولرلی ان دا گیون کنڈیشنس وتھ دا میجورٹی آف دا پیپل ریسارٹ ٹو دیز ٹائپ آف پریکٹسز فراڈولینٹ پریکٹسز اینڈ وی مسلمس are also in much involved in all these things. May Allah protect all of us. This is in the backdrop of a particular incident which took place in the life of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi when a person belonged to the Bani Zafar clan happened to steal an armor from an Ansari Sahabi. And when the matter came for investigation fearing that he may be caught he took the armor which he had stolen and put it in the house of a jew to usne jo hai koi ansari sahabi ke ghar se تائمہ نام کا ایک شخص بنی ظفر کے قبیلے کا اس نے ایک ذرہ کو جو ہے اس نے چوری کی اور پھر جو ہے جب معاملہ تحقیق پر آیا تو خوف کے خاطر اس نے کیا کیا اس ذرے کو ایک یہودی کے گھر میں ڈال دیا So the matter came up, the case was brought before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this Taima was a very mischievous person. He could not be trusted, but nevertheless, he claimed to be a Muslim. So he gathered his people and went and told the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is the Jew who has stolen. And the people who accompanied him also put their case before the Prophet and started pleading on his behalf and saying that he should be more trusted being a Muslim and not the Jew who actually has stolen. Now the Prophet also on hearing all these arguments was on the verge of holding the Jew culpable of this crime. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down these verses and presents the truths and the fact before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order that he may be saved from giving a wrong judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala farmata hai, jinn logon ke baare mein tum jante ho ke wo khyanat kare hain, dhoka dene wale, jhoot bolne wale, dagaabaz log, in ke liye kabhi wakalat mat karo. اگر تم ایسا کرو گے تو تم بھی جو ہے گنا میں شریک ہو جاؤ گے پرٹیکولرلی ایز ایڈوکیٹس ٹو ٹیک اپ کیسز یو مس بی ویری کیئرفل ٹو ٹیک اپ سچ کائنڈ آف کیسز وے دے نو دیٹ دیئر کلائنٹ از آن دا رائٹ اینڈ ناٹ جسٹ ٹیک اپ کیسز فار دا سیک آف میکنگ منی اینڈ فائٹنگ کیسز آن بیہاف آف دوز پیپل ہوم دی ایڈوکیٹ آلسو نوز دیٹ ہی از ایٹ فالٹ بٹ trying to defend the indefensible. یہ غلط ہے اس قسم کی وکالت یا کسی کے لیے جو ہے ان کے بہاف میں آرگیومنٹ کرنا جن کے بارے میں آپ جانتے ہیں کہ دیز پیپل ہیو کمیٹیڈ ایسن بٹ ان اسپائٹ آف دیٹ وہ میرے بستی والا وہ میرا دوست وہ میرا پڑوس وہ میرا پہچانت والا وہ میرا کلائنٹ وہ میرا کسٹمر This has no place at all. He is known to me. He is my friend. He was my neighbor. He is my classmate. He is my client. He is my customer. He belongs to the same city or the town which I come from. All this has no basis at all. You have to fear Allah in all these matters. 
it may be something at a micro level or a macro level it can be a matter within your family itself never advocate on behalf of those whom you know are at fault accept acknowledge the mistake whoever it may be stand up for justice always speak the truth be honest don't advocate on behalf of those people whom you know are at fault and here religion caste ethnicity has no has no importance at all is not to be considered at all you are supposed to give the judgment you are supposed to take a decision based on facts and based on the truth and that very powerful verse which allah subhanahu wa taala says over here ha antum ha ulai jadal tum anhum fil hayati dunya fa may yujadilu allah anhum yawm al qiyamah you can argue for them in the life of this world just to please them just to be in their good books and just to get some worldly benefit but will you be able to put forth your case before allah on the day of qiyamah who knows in and out of all that has happened can you do that who will come to your rescue on the day of qiyamah today you are going to a rescue of somebody knowing very well that he is committed an act of sin by stealing and you are defending the indefensible but on the day of qiyamah how could you put your case before allah subhanahu wa taala who knows in and out can you do it will there be anybody to come to your rescue on the day of qiyamah very very powerful statement so as believers we are a khair ummah we are an ummat e wasat the best people ummat e wasat means a community which stands for justice we are a shuhada al nas we are a community through our actions will portray what is true islam is we are the ambassadors of islam we are the brand ambassadors of the quran and we as believers should always stand for justice we should be role models for others people belonging to other faiths and communities should look up to us for honesty is our watchword that's what iman is all about namaz roza zakat and hajj only one part of islam a very small part of islam no important but the larger part of islam is our maamilat lain den maishat akhlaq all this is the major part of islam our means of livelihood our character our behavior our conduct our transactions our day to day dealings this is major part of islam and any violation in this particular area will have to pay a very very heavy price on the day of qiyamah and allah will not pardon you until proper compensation is done on the day of qiyamah we all know that particular hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that a man will come with a load of virtues but he would have committed some act of fraud or dishonesty or cheating or would abuse somebody insulted somebody hurt somebody snatched away somebody's wealth deprived somebody of their due rights misappropriation of funds that have happened so many things a violation of human rights would have happened and you know what will happen you know very well all the victims will be brought on the day of qiyamah and all these man's good deeds will be shared among them will be given away to them after that there will still be some victims and this man and their sins will be put on this fellow's account and finally he will be dragged and thrown into the hell fire so what is the use of having done so many good deeds when there was gross human right violation on the other insani huquq allah subhanahu wa taala us waqt tak agar uski paamali hui to allah us waqt tak maaf nahi karega jab tak jo hai wo victim maaf na kare या फिर क्यामत का दिन जो है इसके पूरे नेकियां उसको दे दी जाएंगी उसके गुनाह इसके बर्ड डाल दे जाएंगे और इसको जो है शख्स को जहन्नम में फेंक दिया जाएगा यही जो है क्यामत के दिन इंसाफ का तरीका होगा अरे कई वाई शुड वी टेक एवरीथिंग फॉरवर्ड द डे ऑफ क्यामा वाई डोंट वी सॉर्ट आउट एवरीथिंग विल बी नो करेंसी टू बेलस आउट दी करेंसी दैट वर्क दर इज योर गुड डीड्स विच विल ऑल बी गिवेन अवे टू दिक्टम्स मे अल्लाह प्रोटेक्ट ऑल ऑफ एस अल्लाह सुबह नवर बिकम for the treacherous for the people who deceive for the people who cheat for the people who are fault never be a pleader for them never be an advocate for them never fight their case just for some worldly benefit don't fight their case when you know very well 
that this person is at fault. Today, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Why? He's a customer client of mine. I get my fees and therefore I have to fight. Why? He's on the wrong. How can you fight? No, no, no. All that doesn't work in the courts. Doesn't work in the court of this world. Will it work in the court of the hereafter? They then remain silent. That's very dangerous. How can we barter away, barter away our faith for the sake of some worldly benefit? Please tell me. Dunya ke kuch dinham or dinar or kuch rupiyon ke liye hum kaise apne iman ko bech sakte hain? No, very, very powerful verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is conveying to us. Further Allah says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَزْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ سُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهَ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورَ الرَّحِيمَ وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ إِثْمًا فَإِنَّمَا يَكْسِبُهُ وَلَا نَفْسِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ خَتِيئَةً أَوْ إِثْمًا سُمَّ يَرْمِ بِهِ بَرِيئًا فَقَدِهْتَمَ لَا بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا And whoever does evil or yaslim nafsahu wrongs himself Wrongs himself always comes, which means who has committed a sin, who has caused injustice to his own self. That's what it means. Yeah. And whoever does evil or wrongs himself, then seeks forgiveness from Allah. Yajidullah Ghafur al Rahima will find Allah most forgiving, most merciful. Wamani Yaksib Isman, and whoever earns a sin, then only his earning shall be against his own self. And is Allah all knower, all wise. وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ خَتِيَةً And whoever earns a fault or a sin سُمَّ يَرْمِي بِهِ بَرِيَنْ Then puts it on an innocent person فَقَدِهْتَ مَلَا بُحْتَانَ وَإِسْمَ مُبِينَ Then indeed he carries a burden of slander and a sin clear. جو کوئی عمل کرے برا یا ظلم کرے اپنے جان پر پھر وہ بخشش طلب کرے اللہ سے پائے گا اللہ کو انتہائی بخشنے والا کو برہم فرمانے والا اور جو کوئی کمائے کوئی گناہ تو صرف اس کی کمائی اس کے خلاف ہو جائے گی اور ہے اللہ خوب جاننے والا خوب حکمت والا اور جو کوئی کمائے کوئی خطا یا گناہ پھر وہ ڈال دے اس کو کسی معصوم پر یا بے خسور پر تو البتہ اس نے اٹھایا ایک بوجھ بہتان کا اور سریح گناہ کا سو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ سے ویل بائی مسٹیک اف یو ہیو کمیٹڈ some fault or sin, get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek His forgiveness. Allah is even telling that to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wastaqfirullah, seek forgiveness from Allah. You also came under the influence of this person, Taima, and his people, O beloved Prophet. So therefore, you also seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the beloved Prophet from pronouncing the verdict and at the right time intervene and stop the Prophet sallam, from making a wrong judgment. Because after all, the Prophet himself is a human being. He does not know, have the knowledge of the unseen except what is conveyed to him. And Prophet sallam, himself says it in a hadith. After all, I am a human being and when I hear the case and if the concerned person who is putting forth the argument he is able to, through his intelligence and through his oratory power, would like would, would influence, then I am also a human being. I could decide in his favor. But let the people know that for this, they are actually purchasing a place for themselves in the hellfire. You want to get something and save yourself in spite of you knowing that you are only the one who is the culprit and the criminal and the sinner and you are putting the blame on an innocent person yet through your oratory power you want to win the case in your favor by either bribing the judge or through your oratory power or the advocate whom you are engaging through his oratory power through his skill through his expertise and through his professionalism may influence the judge to decide the favor the decide the judgment in their favor knowing very well that his client is at mistake let such people know that they actually creating a place for them in the hell. This is the hadith of the Prophet So very, very serious warnings have come in all these matters where people become pleaders, advocates, and fight the cases for treacherous people. It's a very, very scary matter. The subject has been discussed in detail. May Allah protect all of us. From first and foremost, being at fault and fighting a case or pleading for a matter which we know 
is itself wrong. So for all these, we need to seek forgiveness from Allah and never seek the worldly benefit to destroy the hereafter. Ameen. <clears throat> وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَهَمَّتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ عَنْ يُدِلُّوكَ وَمَا يُدِلُّونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَدُرُّونَ كَمِنْ شَيْءٍ وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَأَلَّمَ كَمَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَزِيمًا And had it not been the grace of Allah upon you and his mercy لَهَمَّتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ عَنْ يُدِلُّوكَ Surely would have decided a group among them and use it look that they lead you astray. And not they lead astray except unfusam themselves. And not they can harm you anything. And has sent down Allah upon you the book. Wal hikmah and wisdom. Wal and taught you. Ma'alam takun ta'alam. What not you knew. And is the grace of Allah upon you great. Or agar cheke na hota Allah ka fazal aap par. Yana Allah ke rasul par Allah farmata hai. اگر چکے نہ ہوتا اللہ کا فضل آپ پر اور اس کی رحمت ضرور خسد کر لیتا ایک گروہ ان میں سے کہ وہ تمہیں گمراہ کرے نہیں وہ گمراہ کرتے سوائے اپنے آپ کو نہیں وہ آپ کا بگاڑ سکتے کچھ بھی اور نازل کیا اللہ نے آپ پر کتاب اور حکمت اور سکھایا آپ کو جو نہیں آپ جانتے تھے اور ہے اللہ کا فضل آپ پر بہت بڑا اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ has taken upon himself the responsibility to safeguard the credibility the honor of the prophets and including the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah ne apna zimmah le liya ki anbiya akram ki zat par joh log kichar uchkharne ki koshish kare ya unko bura bala ke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unki ifadat farmata hai. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come to the rescue of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam against him making a wrong judgment. For Allah says, O beloved Prophet, the bounty and grace of Allah is upon you great. Otherwise, there would have happened very serious repercussions. Huh? The Munaf, the Jews, the disbelievers were all waiting for an opportunity. And suppose they got to know that it was not the Jew actually who was at fault. And it was that Taima, that Ansari person who was at fault. Then they would have made a hue and cry that you Muslims stand for justice. You people make tall claims about your religion and see the kind of verdict your prophet has delivered. Blah, blah, blah. So many things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah has come to your rescue. When almost a group among them were wanting you to pronounce a wrong verdict, but Allah saved you. For Allah's grace is upon you great. La khaira fi kaseer min najwahum illa man amara bi sadakhatin aw ma'roofin aw islahim bainan nas wa man yafal zalik abtiga amar zati allahi fa sofa nutihi ajran azima. Very powerful. Samo instructions given to us please listen to them carefully don't leave the class unless really genuine we'll try to complete on time inshallah la khaira fi kaseerim there's no good in most of their najwahum secret meetings najwahum means secret meetings except man amara bi sadaqatin whoever commands with charity or ma'roofin or anything good or islahim benanas or reconciliation between the people وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ And whoever does that, ابْتِغَى مَرْزَاتِ اللَّهِ Seeking the pleasure of Allah. فَصَوْفَ نُوتِهِ عَجْرَ نَذِيمًا Then soon we shall grant him a reward great. نَحِي خَوَيْتْ کوئی خیر اکثر ان کے خفیہ مشفروں میں سوائے جو حکم کرے صدقے کا یا کوئی نیکی کے کام کا یا صلاح لوگوں کے درمیان یا صلاح پیدا کرنا لوگوں کے درمیان اور جو کوئی کرے ایسا تلاش کرتے ہوئے اللہ کی رضا مندی ہم دیں گے اس کو انقریب ہم دیں گے اس کو عجر بہت بڑا see we belong to so many organizations associations, institutions Allah says there may be certain meetings which are very essential and if the meetings don't come under these particular subjects then there's no good in attending those meetings as sheer waste of time Whenever you go for any meeting or you're invited for any meeting, we need to know whether the concerned meeting is going to discuss on this subject of sadaqa or maruf or islahim bananas. If it comes under this category, inshallah, we all attend. Otherwise, no, because there's no khair in it. There's no blessings of Allah in it. There's nothing productive going to happen. 
is going to be a sheer waste of time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, only such kind of meetings wherein subjects of charity is discussed, where you want to help somebody, there's some project, char charity project which you are undertaking, a fundraising project which will help or benefit something or someone. The second is anything which is good in nature. Number three, bringing about reconciliation between people. All these are some of those noble virtues for which if you are invited for such meeting, yes, please go. Otherwise, don't go and waste your time in meetings which are not productive, which are more like a club where people socialize, have fun, eat, drink and walk away. It's a sheer waste of time. Don't attend such meetings, Allah says. And those people, whoever does, does attend such meetings should do it only for seeking the pleasure of Allah. Oh, if I don't go, what will the president think? Or oh, let me just go show my face and come back. All these type of talk will not fetch you the reward from Allah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and participate in such good causes only to seek the pleasure of Allah. And for people who seek the pleasure of Allah in all these matters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises them great rewards. <clears throat> And whoever opposes the messenger, and whoever opposes the messenger from after, what has become clear to him, the guidance, and follows other than the path of the believers, we shall turn him towards what he has turned away. And we shall burn him in the hell. Wasat masira and evil is the destination. Or jo koi mukhalifat kare rasul ki baad jo wazu hoga uske liye hidayat. Or pervi kare iman walon ke raste ki ilawa ham phir denge usko jis ki taraf wo phir gaya aur ham jalayenge usko jahannam mein bhot bura hai wo thikana. It's a very, very important message for you and I, particularly in the kind of situations and the kind of times we are living in, where everybody wants to give their own opinion and create controversies, create disunity in the Ummah. For those people who lived during the time of the Prophet, what the Prophet would decide, that is ultimate. Fala wa rabbika la hatta. So we have seen this verse earlier in Surah Nisa, in the same Surah. Until we don't make Prophet Sallallahu the final judge and the final authority in deciding all our matters, until then we cannot become believers. So those people who lived during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu namely the Sahabas, we know that when the Prophet Sallallahu decided on a matter, they would all accept wholeheartedly and submit and surrender before his instruction. They always said, Samena wa atana, we heard and we obey. That was the spirit of the Sahabas, which Allah gave them the greatest status where we never mentioned the name of the Sahabas. We said, Razi Allah ta'ala. May Allah be pleased with them. That is the exalted status the Sahabas acquired on account of their obedience to the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now coming to our times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go on consensus. Ijma'e ummat, ijma'e khom ki ahmiyat al is ayat se malum hoti hai. When the majority of the scholars of Islam have decided on a particular matter, on a particular subject and have come to a consensus, right or wrong, that is immaterial. They will be answerable if at all there is any mistake from their end. But if the majority of the scholars have come to a consensus and decided a matter, we as believers are supposed to accept their decision and not create our own theory and stay away or be non-cooperative in the decision which is taken on consensus. This is going to create Controversies, disputes, and most important, it destroys the unity of the Ummah. 
Today, the Muslim community cannot even decide on the day they should celebrate the Eid. The majority decision is taken, but still there's a lot of groups of people who will celebrate the Eid one day before or two days before, whatever. We find this happening throughout the globe. Even when I went to Australia, this was one of the questions put forth to me in a major gathering where I spoke. So this is a universal phenomenon. It's a universal phenomenon today. And it is growing by leaps and bounds. Everybody wants to become a mufti. Everybody wants to become a leader. Everybody wants to sensationalize the matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, never do that. If you're going to take a decision other than what consensus has been reached, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns and goes to the extent to say, Nuslihi jahannam, we shall burn him in the hell. Wasat masira, and evil is the destination. May Allah protect all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to abide by the teachings of Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to remain obedient to Allah and His Messenger at all times. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from battering our faith for the sake of some worldly benefit and always fight and stand for justice until our last breath. For this is the outstanding quality of a true believer. May Allah include us among them. Ameen. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Looking forward to seeing you inshallah tomorrow with the rest of the verses. Kindly be on time. Attend the class regularly. Do your homework. Jazakallah khair. Subhanallah. Wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahum. Wa bihamdihi. Kana shadu Allah. Ilahi lanta. Nasqaf. Rukana tubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.